Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Friday, November 25th, 2022. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Today, we continue to read about the reign of the good King Hezekiah, and we're going to hear about more of the religious reforms that Hezekiah enacted during his reign. When all this was completed, all Israel who had attended went out to the cities of Judah and broke up the sacred pillars, chopped down the Asherah poles, and tore down the high places and altars throughout Judah and Benjamin, as well as in Ephraim and Manasseh, to the last one. Then all the Israelites returned to their cities, each to his own possession. Hezekiah reestablished the divisions of the priests and Levites for the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, for ministry, for giving thanks, and for praise in the gates of the camp of the Lord, each division corresponding to his service among the priests and Levites. The king contributed from his own possessions for the regular morning and evening burnt offerings, the burnt offerings of the Sabbaths, of the new moons, and of the appointed feasts, as written in the law of the Lord. He told the people who lived in Jerusalem to give a contribution for the priests and Levites, so that they could devote their energy to the law of the Lord. When the word spread, the Israelites gave liberally of the best of the grain, new wine, fresh oil, honey, and of all the produce of the field, and they brought in an abundance, a tenth of everything. As for the Israelites and Judahites who lived in the cities of Judah, they also brought a tenth of the herds and flocks, and a tenth of the dedicated things that were consecrated to the Lord their God. They gathered them into large piles. In the third month, they began building up the piles, and they finished in the seventh month. When Hezekiah and his officials came and viewed the piles, they blessed the Lord and his people Israel. Hezekiah asked the priests and Levites about the piles. The chief priest, Azariah, of the house of Zadok, answered him, Since they began bringing the offering to the Lord's temple, we have been eating and are satisfied, and there is plenty left over because the Lord has blessed his people. This abundance is what is left over. Hezekiah told them to prepare chambers in the Lord's temple, and they prepared them. The offering, the tenth, and the dedicated things were brought faithfully. Conaniah the Levite was the officer in charge of them, and his brother Shimei was second. Jehiel, Azaziah, Nahath, Asahel, Jeremoth, Jazabad, Eliel, Ismachiah, Mahath, and Benaiah were deputies under the authority of Conaniah and his brother Shimei by appointment of King Hezekiah and of Azariah, the chief official of God's temple. Korah, son of Imna the Levite, the keeper of the east gate, was over the free will offerings to God to distribute the contribution to the, to the Lord and the consecrated things. Eden, Minyamin, Jeshua, Shemaiah, Amariah, and Shechaniah in the cities of the priests were to distribute it faithfully under his authority to their brothers by divisions, whether large or small. In addition, they distributed it to the males registered by genealogy three years old and above, to all who would enter the Lord's temple for their daily duty, for their service in their responsibilities according to their divisions. They distributed also to those recorded by genealogy of the priests by their ancestral families and the Levites 20 years old and above by their responsibilities in their divisions. To those registered by genealogy with all their dependents, wives, sons, and daughters of the whole assembly, for they had faithfully consecrated themselves as holy, and to the descendants of Aaron, the priests, in the common fields of their cities in each and every city. There were men who were registered by name to distribute a portion to every male along the pre among the priests and to every Levite recorded by genealogy. Hezekiah did this throughout all Judah. He did what was good and upright and true before the Lord his God. He was diligent in every deed that he began in the service of God's temple, in the instruction and the commands, and in order to seek his God, and he prospered.
So far in this vision that Jesus gave to John, we have seen many depictions of the enemies of God's people. Today, as we read Revelation chapter 17, we are going to see yet another graphic depiction of the enemy, uh, of the enemies that continue to fight against God's people. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bulls came and spoke with me. Come, I will show you the judgment of the notorious prostitute who is seated on many waters. The kings of the earth committed sexual immorality with her. And those who live on the earth became drunk on the wine of her sexual immorality. Then he carried me away in the spirit to a wilderness. I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet, adorned with gold, jewels, and pearls. She had a golden cup in her hand filled with everything detestable, and with the impurities of her prostitution. On her head was written a name, a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and of the detestable things of the earth. Then I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the witnesses to Jesus. When I saw her, I was greatly astonished. Then the angel said to me, why are you astonished? I will explain to you the mystery of the woman and of the beast, with the seven heads and the ten horns that carries her. The beast that you saw was, and is not, and is about to come up from the abyss and go to destruction. Those who live on the earth, whose names have not been written in the book of life from the, from the foundation of the world, will be astonished when they see the beast that was, and is not, and is to come. This calls for a mind that has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman is seated. They are also seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must remain for only a little while. The beast that was and is not is itself an eighth king, but it belongs to the seven and is going to destruction. The ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom but they will receive authority as kings with the beast for one hour. These have one purpose, and they give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war against the lamb, but the lamb will conquer them, because he is Lord of lords and king of kings. Those with him are called, chosen, and faithful. He also said to me, the waters you saw where the prostitute was seated, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages. The ten horns you saw and the beast will hate the prostitute. They will make her desolate and naked, devour her flesh, and burn her up with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to carry out his plan by having one purpose, and to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman you saw is the great city that has royal power over the kings of the earth. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.